Facts. All right. One thing I wanted to talk about, we've talked about depression on here before, but we never really touched on depression in kids, in the youth. That's that's a topic that is crippling our society right now. We got a, a influx, uh, blah, 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 I'm tongue tied right now, influx in kids that are depressed and unaliving themselves at rates never seen before in history. I mean, they said the depression rate just since the introduction of social media went from like reported 16, 15% spiked up to like 66, 70%. So it's the direct correlation with, with social media, with screen time and kids being depressed. Mm -hmm. And this is why I tried to keep my kids off of social media for as long as I could, because I see what it does to adults with fully developed brains. So you can imagine what it's doing to kids whose brain isn't even developed yet. Like they said, the uh, comparison is the killer of all joy. So you got kids seeing kids they age that's rich, or they got parents that's famous, or maybe they ain't rich and famous. They just look rich and famous, but they don't know how to decipher people lying on social media and making things look a certain way. That's not the reality. And they're judging their reality off of that. Not, not to mention, kids don't go outside no more. Kids don't go to friends' houses and play no more. They don't go to the park. They don't go play tag. They don't use their imagination at all. All the, They don't go ride bikes, skateboards. Kids don't scrape their knees. They don't fist fight. They don't do nothing we did as kids. Kids ain't fact. drinking out the water hose. <laughs> like, they don't know nothing about this. They don't know nothing about going to the dirt field and, and finding the, the sour grass and chewing on it like a sour <laughs> straw. They don't know nothing about that. It's like... My kids call me call me a boomer, like, oh, you're a boomer, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, you old. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't know nothing about this. But we're now in a generation where the parents have to be the kids' friends damn near. You have to force them to be social. You mm -hmm. have to think of things that, for them to do on the weekend. Whereas us, we up before our parents was up, out yeah. the door, gone, yeah. before they fuck around and tell us to stay in. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> staying in was the punishment. Mm -hmm. Now going out is the punishment. And the whole... All of this ties into the medical industry. Mm -hmm. Big you know who. Because a lot of kids are being put in therapy now and automatically, first thing they say, antidepressants. Kid needs to be on antidepressants. Kids need to be on psych meds. Wait a minute, you talk to this kid one time for 10 minutes and you telling me they need to be on antidepressants and psych meds? Turning them into zombies? So, parents... You have to be an advocate for your kids. A, lo a lot of this therapy, you got to be your kid's therapist. You got to medicate your ki uh, help self-medicate your kids with their mentality. Because like I always say on this show, depression is a self-inflicted wound. Most of the things you're depressed about are problems you created in your own mind. And that ties in with your kids as well. They're doing the same. They need to know, I can get over this myself. I don't need a pill. I don't need psych meds. Mm -hmm. I don't need antidepressants because our society is flooded with people on antidepressants and then the side effect of that is more depression make it make sense the medicine is making you more depressed mm -hmm. it's making you docile it's turning you to a fucking zombie not only turning you to a zombie you're now a customer yeah. you know what i'm saying they ain't trying to help your kids they trying to get your kids on these meds so they can be stuck for life I think that's a fact. I also think, like, we'll take ADHD, for for instance, right? There's a medication by the name of Ritalin that kids get on at a young age, and it doles them out completely where they're, they're literally zombies, like you said, very slowed down. Their imagination is gone. Their sense of energy is gone. And really what it's doing is setting them up to become addicts later on in life. A lot of these people who have problems with, with drugs and alcohol um, get on medication at a very young age. Mostly a lot of them get on Ritalin. That's a, that's a a gateway into it. Um, so I think it's very true that we have to help medicate our kids ourselves. You know what I mean? Like for us, we during summer, we couldn't sit in the house. They was like, you got to play a sport. You got to do something. You can't just sit in the house on the phone talking to the girl. You can't just sit in the house watching movies, eating junk food. You got to go get outside. Obviously, you got to come home when the street lights is on. But the key was to get us outside, get us active. You know what I mean? And obviously, we didn't have the the accessibility to social media, how kids do today, which is a whole different monster, right? And I think the parenting was a little bit tougher back then too, where it was like now, you know, or even back then, people would try to hold kids back. You're not holding my son back. We'll do whatever we, whatever it takes, put him through summer school, whatever, to to get him ahead. Now 
parents are accepting defeat for their children when their children are not even really in the the place to speak for themselves. So you have to be able to fight for your child if you want them to, you know what I mean, progress. A lot of parents don't want to do the work. So they'll say, you know what? Doctor knows best. Give him the medication. He 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 knows best. No, he doesn't know best. He's a part of a big a bigger monster that mm. is here to funnel something to this child to put them on a gateway to something else and to railroad them to something else, to being customers 10, 15 years down the road to whatever antidepressant meds, anti-psych meds. And so that's that's the key. It's kind of like when when I was in school, we had the home row keys, right? We had typing class. And that took place because there was going to be a whole bunch of jobs created where you were going to be in a, a cubicle, in a box. You was going to be typing eight hours a day. So we was already getting set up for that before we even knew it. Same thing with the medication. That's how they do it. And we have to, you know, as parents have to be vigilant or vigilant, my apologies, uh, you know, with our approach. Bars. Yeah, my opinion, I look at it from a, a, a different standpoint. I think a lot of this shit is fucked up because babies started having babies. And a lot of these, a lot of these adults now are regretting having children so early to the point where they're they're putting their happiness before their kids' development. And by them putting their happiness before these kids' development, they're not really caring. So when they are giving these kids, I don't think five year olds should have cell phones or these certain type of video games. Yeah, have a PlayStation or something like that. But for these phones, I seen a I seen a, a clip of a video where the kid had a he had an iPad in his lap and he had a phone in his hand. And he going back and forth, scrolling both, trying to see which one. And whenever one stops, he going back and forth, back and forth. Then they had another baby about three years old laying on the table crying, doing this to the air of the other with no phone in his hand. That bad to where he's 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 that addicted to it. The dopamine is killing these kids and doing whatever they're doing. Like I said, these parents don't really, it's like you don't want to really regret your kids, but some people do. I hate to say it. They mad. It's not that you really regret them, but you like, man, I should have developed myself a little more before I got a chance to 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 start raising these kids. It ain't no joke. Once I got them, it's over. Now these is for life. And now you 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 regretting a lot of things. So that's the process of trying to be a friend to a seven year old or a ten year old when they need your guidance and they need your discipline to keep them from being a certain way. These kids ain't depressed, like you said. They not going outside. When we was outside. We didn't have time to think about being depressed. My mind is not even thinking about nothing because I'm so being in the moment of what I'm doing. If I'm playing sports, if we playing basketball, we're going to the block to 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 do different things. And when we was kids, I remember they used to they used to block off the streets and bring game trucks mm. and a lot of different stuff like that that mm-hmm. these kids don't get. They forced us to play. And we like you said, it was a punishment for us to come back in. Let me stay out a little longer. You know what I mean? Or whatever the case is. These kids, these kids could cry and get what they want. And they learn how to manipulate these parents, these young parents and now they're giving in, be like, well, I need to be a friend because I, I didn't have it like this when I was growing up. And I think this is how I should be, not knowing that's detrimental to the kids' development in the future. And that's and, and that's what I feel like is fucking them up, in my opinion. That's uh, so, big that that's not to cut you off. You that's big facts. A lot of these kids' depression is caused by the parents. Like you said, you got a lot of resentful parents looking at the kid like, damn, you, you, you putting a halt to my life. I can't travel. I can't do this. I can't do that. And a lot of parents that don't want to parent, they go going to work with to jobs they hate, sitting in traffic. By the time they get home, they burnt out. They're not trying to do nothing with their kids, no homework, no nothing. So I'm going to get them a cell phone just to shut them up. They, the cell phone is babysitting. The iPad is babysitting. I seen that video you said of the, of the, of the baby. No, no phone, no iPad in his hand. He's just crying. Scrolling the air, it's a name yeah, for facts. Like iPad zombies, I wish we or something had like video. that. Yeah, yeah. For that's sure. crazy, man. So you got a whole generation of iPad zombies and parents, rather than being involved in and in playing board games with their kids. Parents don't even play board games no more. Like I, we we just made it a habit in my house. Man, we finna start playing board games. Put them phones up. We finna start interacting games to make you think at that. Mm-hmm. Like when the last time you seen a kid outside playing on the uh, in the fire hydrant water, like. They don't open up fire hydrants no more. Like he said, the game truck used to come to the block. They used to crack open the fire hydrant. You could play in the fire hydrant. You could play a game on the truck. But the whole block and kids four or five blocks down would all come. Now you meet new kids in your neighborhood. Now when the game truck gone, oh, what block you stay on? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, I stay on Olive. I stay on Raymond. Oh, you online? Cool, we over there. Ride our oh, bikes. We, oh, we used to get teams. We used to do this. Get all the homies on the block. We used to go four or five blocks down, ten blocks down. All right, us against y'all. Y'all whole block, though. Water balloon fights. When mm-hmm. the last time you seen a water balloon fight? This block versus that block. 
This shit don't happen no more. Kids don't this, even know what playing tag is. <laughs> this is like ancient times. So no wonder they're depressed. The only interaction they get is at school. And when they at school, they're there for eight hours a day. Now the parents get the grades on the phone. So you got parents texting their kids while the kids are at school in class. What the mm -hmm. fuck going on with your grades? You got an F in this class, not a kid in class. Like, fuck. Adding on to the depression. Yeah. This shit is crazy. And I also think, too, you have the, the flip side to that which are parents that are overly active in their kid's life, which creates a kid that mm. is always looking over their shoulder for their mother or their father's support to a, to a detriment. And I think that's where Montessori parenting comes in, whereas at a, you get your kid at a young age and you allow them to do tasks around the house uh, to develop themselves in a more independent way. You see kids, and I believe in, in China and Japan, they have whole series of kids coming home from school making their whole lunch, taking out the trash, cleaning up their stuff, starting their homework all by themselves. You have uh, videos of them going to the store, getting their snacks, coming home, making it, eating. And so I think the flip side is where you have parents now that are so afraid for their kid to experience any negative experience that they're intervening, which is messing them up because a lot of those experiences that we had as children helped shape us into who we are and made us stronger people. Even though you know you want to shield and protect your kid from the most negative experiences you can, some of these things kids have to go through. Kids gotta knuckle up. Kids gotta go outside and get their heart broke. Kids gotta learn how to talk to people and, and you know what I mean, fellowship in the neighborhood because that's what's gonna help them have social skills, help them learn how to defend themselves and things like that. So I think we don't talk about that side as well, where you have parents that are so much in their kid's life where it's like kid is 10 years old, 12 years old, and he still don't even which is not old, but it's like you're old enough to be a little bit independent. Then, you you know what I mean? You get it to kids in the high school, 16, 17 years old, and they don't know how to make a decision at all without their parents around, which for us growing up, that's not how it was. We was driving cars at 17, 18. Now you got kids that's 25, no license, nothing. Never, never driven a car. You was doing your thing. <laughs> like, 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 like. Kel was doing his thing. Like, you feel what I'm saying? No, but we, 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 yeah. we was on it. We had, like, I, I was 16 with a job. I was taking a train, going to work. I was doing shit like that when I was 16. I know not everybody was, but also circumstances within my life, you know, made it to where I had to grow up a little bit faster. But still, I didn't have somebody feeding what could happen in the most negative way every second of the day, which I feel like that's a lot of parents now. And that's where kids have this this fear that we didn't really have when they go outside. These kids, these kids are more so telling the parents what to do. Like when I was younger, we didn't have we didn't have a choice. If mama was making chicken, <laughs> corn, and beans for dinner, nigga, that's what you eating. It ain't no I want this and I got an option to get McDonald's and all this other shit. No, you not you're, you're not eating. Or you not yeah, eating? Yeah, you not ain't eating hungry. Shit, yeah. That's at the end of the day. That's all you getting. Facts. It'll be here when you hungry. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You gonna go in there and go eat that shit later, mm -hmm. regardless whether it's cold or not. So I just think it's the it's the choices of giving these kids too many choices. There's nothing wrong with showering your kids with the things that you feel like they deserve or the things that you didn't get when you was when you was younger. So you want to put that on your children is good, but make them earn that shit. Make them do chores. Make them do certain things to the point where they don't think that everything is just given to them in life because now their expectations of just anything, of thinking that parents are superheroes and especially the ones who's breaking their back for their kids but not showing that to their kids and their kids thinking, I can just ask for this and I get it. Or even they're rewarded for being with bad behavior. They're rewarded for it does not matter. If they're doing good in school, it does not matter. Whatever the case is, hey, the kid is feeling bad. He's crying. Let me let me shut him up and give him whatever he needs or whatever she needs. So I just think parents got to dial in a little bit and separate. You can be friends with your kids, but separate that shit a little bit in certain aspects. Mm, yeah, I, I just want to touch on Montessori, Montessori parenting because I heard you mention that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people probably like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. It's basically a parenting style where you let your kids develop and practice skills on their own uninterrupted. Like you said, I might give you a task and rather than stand over your shoulder, I'll let you figure out the best way to do it. You know, to, to your, your skill set. What's mm -hmm. best for your skill set? Because a lot of times parents over parent and take away the identity of their kid. Yeah, they're a kid, but they're still a person developing their own identity. They see the world through a different lens than you do. You got a lot of parents also living vicariously through their kid. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, I, my dream was to go to NFL. I couldn't make it. <laughs> so your little ass going to NFL, you, you're going to be the one to save the family. Now you forcing a kid to do some shit he don't even want to do. Even if he is good at football, you on him so much to make the goddamn NFL 
He hate football now. Yep. I see that shit all the time. Kid got real talent, but you at practice over coaching more than the goddamn coaches. Like, damn, you in the stands coaching the coach. Let the kid have fun. <laughs> yeah, He's still a fucking kid. And it's a fine line between Montessori parenting, letting them develop skills on their own, and you letting them crash themselves. So you got to know that line. It's a lot of best friend parenting. Like, oh, I. it's not so much with the men. More so with the women. Like, I want to be my kid's friend. I want to be my daughter's friend because you don't want them to resent you or look at you like the bad person. So dads will usually take the role of the bad guy where mama say, yeah, dad will come say no, mm -hmm. and he'll take the flack for it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to know when to draw that line. Like, yeah, you can learn on your own, but I've already lived enough life to know better than you that this is not a good decision to make. You know what I'm saying? And give them a different option or a different route. Stop friend parenting. Your kids will be mad at you for a second. They'll get over it. Facts. But you can crash your own kids trying to be so cool you say yes to everything. No, they need to learn discipline. I, I, I agree with that last thing you said, too. Allow the kids, give them a task and an assignment to do what they do and see how, see how much they think. They might think outside the box to where they might get it done in a better way than you thought they would. And then when they do make the mistake, that's when you correct them. Don't correct them before they even get a chance to make the mistake. Allow them to do it, and then you teach them. Like, that's a teaching moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, or you put these in wrong, or put this X amount of soap in the washer, or wash the dishes this way. After you allow them to do what they do, and then when you see the mistake, you know where to correct it versus just getting on their head and waiting for them to, they, to pressure them to make a mistake. No, that's a fact because in life there's more than one way to do things you know what i mean to like even in an equation you could take math for instance there's multiple ways you can get the same outcome you know you know what i mean and so when you allow your kids and you give them that space to figure it out they'll come up with their own way to create the solution which is a productive member of society you know but at the end of the day it really goes back to the trap in the hamster wheel what we're speaking on when it comes to the depression and the medication is because they're taking the parents out the house you know what I mean? Putting them in there nine to five. Like you said, it's taking them two hours to get to work. They go to work for eight hours. Then they got to come home. That's another two hours in traffic. So they have no choice but to give them the phone. Then they get on the weekends, take them to the doctor. They're already burnt out and tired because they got to go back to work the next day. Okay, give them the meds. So they got everybody on a hamster wheel to do exactly what they want us to do. We have to make the decision as parents or guardians when we're going to wake up fight against that and raise these kids the way we want to, not the way they want us to. Look, this is time.